It seems like every time I open my inbox, another invitation pops up. No, not that kind of invitation. These are marketing conference invites, and you probably get them too. You can identify a marketing conference announcement by its sleek branding, its modern color palette, its rows of smiling speaker headshots, and its promises of transformational learning that will up-level your career. But that's what LinkedIn Premium was supposed to do. Presuming you don't have unlimited time to jet from conference to conference, eating free pastries and shaking hands and collecting badges and airborne illnesses, you probably have to limit yourself to just one or a few marketing events each year. So how do you choose conferences that will generate real ROI and avoid dropping serious dough on a three-day party with zero return? Never fear, because even if a bounty of beautifully branded be here's has befuddled your brain and bamboozled your budget, Today's episode with Carrie Twitchell will help. Conferences! Along with being your dad's excuse to get away from your mom three to five days a year, there are also great places to learn new skills, build professional relationships, and even find clients if you're a digital marketer. But these days, you can't turn around without tripping over a new event promising to be the can't-miss conference of the season. When you're debating where to spend your hard-earned ticket money, what tips the scales in favor of one event or the other? The deciding factor is different for everyone. Uh, this conference has an incredible speaker lineup. Ooh, this one promises a pool of potential clients. Hold up, this one's in Barcelona. Screw it, we're going to Barcelona. If you have trouble deciding which events are worth your time, Today's guest on Marketing is Broken will help cure your conference choosing analysis paralysis once and for all. Carrie Twitchell is the founder of Custom Content LLC and president of the Minnesota Search Engine Marketing Association, whose yearly conference is the best dang show you've never heard of. She'll share her level-headed way to weigh the pros and cons of professional conferences. No RSVP FOMO necessary. What are some major factors to consider when deciding what marketing conferences should be? Oh, there are so many. So obviously I'm gonna put the, like the big one up front, cost. Okay, sure. so um, determining which conference you attend, first and foremost, you have to figure out what your budget is. So do you need to travel? If there's a conference you've really been dying to go to, okay, how much does the ticket cost? How much does hotel cost? How much does flight cost? Like you really need to take into account all of the numbers included, not just that ticket price because it's actually a lot higher than a lot of people think about. Um, so I think cost is the thing that most business owners are first and foremost wondering, can I, can I afford it? So I think price is a thing. But aside from that, one of the biggest factors I, I personally pay attention to is how much am I going to take away from this conference as far as actionable insights I can use to move forward my business. So whether that means, you know, um, are the sessions or the keynotes, are there, are there topics that I know I need to know about right now to improve my services? Um, or is it a networking aspect? Like, are there certain people that are going to be there that I know I will be able to talk to that will help me move my business forward? Um, and if, if I have a yes to one or both of those, then I sure as heck want to make sure I'm there. Sure. Okay, yeah. great perspective. And then once you're there, how do you make sure you're getting the most that you can? Obviously, you can't go at every session. You may not you know, be able to meet every single person, but what do you do like before, during, and after to make sure that you've really gotten your ROI out of the conference? Yeah, well, what you just said there is actually key. Before, during, and after, there are actually things you need to take care of before you even step foot into the conference for the first morning, whether it's a one day or two days or however many days you need to pay attention to that agenda and you need to highlight the must attend sessions. But I also then want you to pay attention to that schedule and say, which ones can I avoid? And can I hang out in the hallway? And like the hallway track is something a lot of people don't think about, um, which is really spending time at a table or something conversing with sponsors, like whatever it is, you need to set time aside to also just hang out and engage with the people around you. Um, so that's there's that prep time in advance, like scheduling. Okay, where do I ha where do I definitely want to be? What do what do I really want to see, or who do I really want to hear? Um, and then, are there times where I can schedule time to be in the hallway 
right, to hang out. Um, and then you make sure you get enough sleep that night before because you need to go in with all the energy possible. Um, for introverts, I know that conferences can be really scary. So in advance, if you feel like you're an introvert, find a buddy and buddy up and just take someone that you can kind of connect with and stay with for the most, most of the time before, you know, so you can then start getting out and sharing um, with other people. So I feel like the buddy system in advance is helpful for people who feel more introverted. Um, otherwise, great. during the, what? I'm sorry. Oh, those are great tips. Go on. Continue. Yeah, yeah. So, and then during the conference, I would say just be engaged. Turn off your cell phone. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're one of those who likes to tweet little bits about conferences throughout, the, okay, fine. If you must, do it. But otherwise, ignore your cell phone from an email perspective, from text messages, from all of it. Don't do it. You want to be present while you're in the room. Um, I would also encourage you to, if you don't have business cards, like print something up the night before or something, have something that you can pass out to people so you can stay connected as the, as the time moves on. And as, you know, if you don't actually get a chance to talk, even though you know you want to, you'll be able to have that follow up. So have something to pass out to people so you can connect afterwards. Um, and then allow yourself to kind of shift off of your schedule if the need arises, right? So say you make a connection with, connection with someone and you know that that is going to lead somewhere very strong, allow yourselves to keep that connection, that conversation going. Um, most conferences, and this is something you can check in advance, most conferences have either video recording or um, PowerPoints that they'll share out after the event or something like that where it's okay if you miss a session, right? Yeah. What happens in the moment can sometimes be some of the most life-changing, business-changing conversations you can have. So just stay engaged, be in the moment, take it all in, and just sure. be there. Sure. Um, and then I say after the conference, like immediately after the conference, that night, um, the following morning, sit down for like a half an hour and say, and just kind of go through, what did I learn? What are like the biggest takeaways? Let me go, like, go back through your notes. What were the action items? You're like, I have to do this. I have to do this. Like, then make that list of all of your action items and prioritize them. Say, I'm going to tackle these three first. And, and then I'll come back to the fresh. list. Yep. Yeah. While it's all fresh, just decompress for a little bit and then make that action item list. Um, if you don't do that, if you just walk away with all your notes, then what, what happened, right? Sure. So you have, you have to make sure you take some time to um, evaluate make that to-do list, and then move forward. Great, great suggestion. So last question, yeah. as people are starting to think about 2020 and playing out, are there any conferences that you can think of that people should consider? And full disclosure, Carrie, you and I are both on the board. So with that, any suggestions? Yeah, well, I mean, full disclosure, being on the board for MinSearch, that does mean we do have a conference of our own coming up in June of 2020. So I don't know if you've heard of it, Josh, um, but we do have what is called the Bin Search Summit. We run this every year. This is our seventh annual conference coming up. Uh, we already have all of our speakers lined up. All of them. We have all of them, which is phenomenal. Um, we have some really great uh, perks lined up for the people who are coming. I mean, it's going to be an amazing event focused obviously on digital marketing with an emphasis on SEO, PPC, uh, cross-channel marketing. We've got a lot of great goodies for people who are in the digital space. You want to be there. That's awesome. Tickets for under $300 for the rest of the year. Great deal. You'll get to see Carrie and me. Carrie Twitchell, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure, sir. Have a good one. Well, now you know what questions to ask when you're planning your highfalutin conference lifestyle next year. Here's to confidently swiping left on the hype and right on the money. Hey, it's Josh from Brandish Insights. Thank you for watching Marketing is Broken. If you like this week's episode, please click below to subscribe or check out other episodes. And if your company could use more insights around your branding efforts, check out brandishinsights.com.